me say this real quick. See, the church members be watching you like a hawk, like your kids, and be like, you know, I saw your child doing, but baby, you need to watch your own child. Your child's got five felonies and six kids out of wedlock. Worry less about what the PK kids is doing and worry about your own kid. That's why your kids be falling by the wayside. Okay, back to what I was saying. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to my corner. Woo! Welcome to my corner. Let's have a talk now. Uh -huh. From Miami to California. Yeah. Check your girl out. I'm going to give it to you straight up. That's right. That's right. Keeping it real. No things inside. Let's go. Welcome to my corner, y'all. What up, everybody? Welcome back to The Corner. Okay, so a month ago, I asked y'all, what type of stuff do you want me to talk about? Like, what's the 411? What's the T? What's everybody want to know about me? Um, and one girl said, I want you to tell us how it was growing up as a PK kid. And do you think that growing up as a PK kid has caused you to, like, fall into this role of, like, being the person you are? Um, what's crazy is... I'm in a group chat with uh, some friends of mine, and we're all PK kids. We're all ministers' kids, and we were talking about that. Like, church is just exhausting. It's a full-time job. It's everything. So let's run it down. How was it growing up as a PK kid? If I could sum up how it was being a PK kid in one video, it would be this. I'm tired of this church. Oh, oh. Wait, dang, That's, your That's a beautiful. Yeah, basically. I mean, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, maybe a little. Like, it's tiring. I, and I'm tired of this church. Uh, being a PK kid is exhausting. Doing ministry in general is exhausting. And I don't think people understand that. It's, it takes a lot for us to get up on Sundays and do all. It's a lot. Because it's not just Sunday. It's during the week. So how was it growing up as a PK kid? It was okay. Um, I kind of feel like if I... I could probably relate to, like, Sasha and Malia. Because their parents were kind of put in this office... And then, like, their life changed. Same thing. Um, you now went from, like, not being noticed to being noticed and living under a magnifying glass. And, like, everybody is, 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 is interested in your life. And they're connecting to you because of who your parents are. And they just want a piece of the pie. I'm going to just be real with it. Like, some people do not connect to you because you're cool. It's because of who your parents are. And then you got security watching all the time. Like, they got the CIA agent. Baby, have you ever seen an armor bear? Your parents' armor bearer watch you like a hawk. They watch you and them. So, uh, yeah, Sasha and Malia, I can relate a little bit. Um, the cool thing about my parents, though, was, like, my parents didn't force me into anything. Like, um, my parents let us be, which is great. I can't speak for other people's parents, but my parents let us be. Um, so, we're non-denominational. We're not koji. We're not apostolic. We're not bad. We're non-denominational, which means I could wear jeans up in the church, big old hoop earrings. I ain't have to wear no holiness head thing to cover my head. We don't play that. Uh-uh. We're non-denominational. Um, I did go to church a lot. Like, I was in the youth choir. I was in the usher board. I was on the dance ministry. I was on a step team. Like, everything that the youth could do, I did it. Um, I had to go to all little Bible camps. And then if it wasn't time for my Bible camp, I had to leave the youth Bible camp. So, yeah, okay, sure. Maybe they did make me do some stuff. Um, but my parents created an environment for me to be me, which I totally am grateful for. Um, when I say me to be me, like, people would, people would like, oh, I saw your kids doing this. But my mom would ask me. My dad would ask me. Um, and they knew their child. Like, that was the other thing. You know what's crazy? I paused into Let me say this real quick. See, the church members be watching you like a hawk, like your kids, and be like, you know, I saw your child doing. But, baby, you need to watch your own child. Your child's got five felonies and six kids out of wedlock. Worry less about what the PK kids is doing and worry about your own kid. That's why your kids be falling by the wayside. Okay, back to what I was saying. Um, but, yeah, so it was normal. Um, do I think that uh, growing up as a PK kid has put me in this role? Uh, my mom and dad didn't force me to be, like, saved, uh, if that's what y'all asking me. No, I kind of just, me and the Lord, we had our own relationship. Um, but... I will say this. Growing up as a PK kid has definitely prepared me for the platforms I'm on now. I am used to people watching my life. But let me tell y'all something. I don't care what, what they see. I do not care. See, the thing is, most PK kids are, like, living their lives for, like, their parents and living their life for other people. They don't know how to say no. I, on the other hand, know how to say no. I ain't doing it. Don't ask me to come to your church if it's long. I ain't coming. Don't ask me to sing. I ain't coming. If you stay in church longer than three hours, I'm out. If you about to prophesy over me, you better put my business on hush-hush. Don't, don't be like, I picked you up in my spirit. Well, put me back down. 
put me back down and come tell me in my ear. I'm an unorthodox PK kid. I, I have no problem telling you no. I have no problem saying I'm not doing it. These other PK kids can't relate. And I think that's why they're so burnt out. Like they're like you think pastors are burnt out? Their kids burn out too because y'all be forcing us to do a lot that we don't want to do. Not me, but the others. So I'm going to speak for them. Hey, check on your kids. If you're a pastor, check on your kid, please. Because, like, you should really have conversations with them because a lot of them are just suffering in silence. They are. A lot of them are suffering in silence because they don't know how to, like, make you proud. They want to make you proud, but at the same time, they want to live their life, and the two can't work. And then there's me who's like, I don't want to make anybody proud. I just want to live my life the way God made me to be. And um, if I make you proud on the way, that's great. If I don't, well, thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory. So you got to get this to this point where, like, I'm going to be me regardless. And everybody doesn't have that privilege. So I think growing up as a PK kid has prepared me to have, like, thick skin. Because, like, let me tell you something. If your pastor say one thing that's unorthodox, they're going to put your pa your, your parents on social media and they're going to read them for filth. And you got to have thick skin. But also, let me tell you, you should also learn how to fight. I don't play by my parents ever. Ever. Period. Uh, I will fight y'all. Um, so I think growing up as a PK kid has given me this thick skin. I don't really care about a lot. Like, you can say whatever you want. You can call me big. Okay, we can look in the mirror and see that. You can call me ugly. That's a lie because your man be in my DMs. You can say whatever you want to say about me. I don't care. <laughs> I do not care. I'm going to live my life to the best of my ability. I think a lot of PK kids should get free from their parents and everything else. Also, though, at the same time, like, I'm not a normal PK kid because I've had the opportunity to go to other churches. And I don't live where my parents live, so I don't go to their church. So I kind of got a break away. Most PK kids stay with their parents' church for years. They've never done anything outside of the church. So they're low-key biased, but whatever. Um, so yeah, that's what it was growing up as a PK kid. And now, in addition to having those things, I will say this. Only thing I really, really didn't like about being a PK kid was the loud prayers at 4.30 in the morning. I don't know about y'all, but my mama be praying early at 4.30 in the morning. And she don't be doing no, dear Jesus. We think, no, she want to pray like, Isha, baba, kara, baro, girl, can you lower your voice? It's 430 in the morning. God can hear you. <laughs> Matter of fact, the angels can hear you. Lower your voice, please, mom. Like, you can pray at 8 o'clock. God still going to hear you. But, baby, when I was a kid, my mom used to bust in my room. She didn't even knock. She used to just bust in a room. I know she paid the bills, but still. Bust in the room, lay her hands all over my head, and it won't know. It's this at 4.30 in the morning. So at that point, you just got to get up and start the day. And you know what's crazy? <laughs> I'm 27 years old, and she still do the same thing. She don't knock. She don't bust in. I'll be like, girl, pray at 9.15, please. God can hear you. He can hear you. Uh, child, that's the only part. <laughs> oh, that praying at 6 30. I'd be like, why you want to pray so loud? Why do you want to pray so loud, girl? Lower your voice. You can whisper. Shoot. God know the thoughts. Baby, pray in your mind, please. Other than that, we cool. Like, growing up as a PK kid has only prepared me for where I'm going or where I'm headed. Um, I'm, I'm good in the light. I'm good. I, I know how to, like, stay low and like mind my business that pays me um now one thing i will say is this um on a serious note i think you guys should be nicer to your pastors <clears throat> well unless your pastor's like stealing ties and sleeping with other women and making you look like a fool every week on the internet no shade to nobody's pastor i was not shading anybody's pastor um but if your pastor up here making y'all look like fools okay maybe you should get a new pastor but if your pastor is a good pastor and like he literally looks out for you and he's making sure y'all are good you should thank him because you don't understand how much sacrifice he makes especially thank the kids too because we sacrifice um you don't know how many birthdays they might have to miss basketball practices recitals because they got to preach to y'all or it's our parents that is up at three o'clock in the morning when your big-headed kid get arrested or when you're in the hospital or at the nursing home, it's our parents that are going over there. It's a lot of sacrifices. And so, like, when they preach a service or multiple services, when they come home, they tire. But guess what? They still have to be parents, and they have to help us with our homework. It's a lot of things that go into being a pastor that I think a lot of people don't know. And it's a lot to be a pastor's kid that you don't understand either. And unless you're in this life, you won't really get it. Um, I can't speak for the apostolics or the kojiks. I can only speak for the non-denominational kids. There's a lot to be going on. Um, so, yeah, that's what it was growing up as a PK kid. I don't think I fall into any stereotypes because I'm unorthodox. I'm going to do what I want to do regardless as long as the Lord say it's good. I don't really. I'm good. 
Um, I hope that answers y'all question. Like, do y'all feel like, well, okay, let me ask you a question. Fellow PK kids, drop down. Did I miss anything? Was there something that you'd like to add about ministry that you feel? All right, let's chat about it. All right, I'll be back in the corner next week. I love y'all. Bye.